Hi, mathematicians. How are you today? Um, I hope that you've been enjoying uh, getting outside more, and I hope that you enjoyed our activities from earlier in this week um, that allowed you to get outside and hopefully practice some um, addition or subtraction or counting by fives. Um, I've got a new um, group of activities for you today, and they all involve shapes. Um, so we at the beginning of the year spent some time talking about um, what we call the like two-dimensional shapes and we practice things with sorting where you could group things by their size or their color or their thickness so we're sort of revisiting some of that um, but i also want to introduce you to the names or reintroduce you to the names of some three-dimensional shapes that i think you probably know or have seen but maybe have forgotten so I have here with me, I have a little collection of shapes, as one does. Um, this, if it were flat, if I had just drawn it, this would be called a circle. But because it's three dimensional, I can roll it in my hand, I can hold it. Um, it is, does anyone know? If you do, go ahead and say it now. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you it's a sphere. Okay, so that is one of the shapes we're going to look at today. Another one is a cube. Um, and a cube is a type of rectangular prism where all of the sides are equal. So just like a square, basically if a square sort of came to life, we have a cube, right? So all the, all the sides are of equal um, length. We also have something called a rectangular prism. So this one has a cube, what we call the base. The base is like the flat part that it rests on, but then it comes up off of my hand and gives it some height. So that's how I know it's three dimensional and we call those a prism. Um, we also have a cylinder. So this is like, and I don't want to tell you too many objects that might look like this, but maybe you're already thinking about it because part of your job today is going to go on a scavenger hunt looking for an object that might look like a cylinder. A cylinder has a round base or a round flat surface and then is still tall off my hand. Hmm. Then we get into some more fun ones, like we have like a cone. I bet you can all maybe imagine something that you might like to have on a hot day that has a cone for a base, or maybe at a party you've seen a hat. Um, but so a cone has a circular base, but then comes up into a point. Um, other ones that are come up into a point are pyramids. And so when we have a pyramid, these are two examples. You'll notice one, you can see that I have enough contrast here. One has a square base and one has a triangular base, right? It's a triangle. So these are both an example of a pyramid, but they have a different base. One is a square, one is a triangle. I've even seen some that are like a hexagon or an octagon, so six or eight sides on the bottom. All right, so we're gonna play around with shapes today and I'm gonna give you a couple activities. I just wanna go through them super quickly with you. I explained them um, on the choice board that's on Seesaw or has been shared with you, but just in case you have any questions, okay? So let me quickly show you this. So this first page here just shows you exactly what I just went over with you, the different types. Oh, I didn't show you my triangular prism. There it is. It's a triangular base, but it has some height to it also. So when we talk about 3D shapes, the D right here, it stands for having three dimensions. And the dimensions that we talk about are length. So often if I were just to like draw something, right, it could have length to it. If I wanted it to have width, right, so length is long, width is wide, then I could maybe draw it going this way. Now it has some width to it also. Um, and even if I just draw this, this is what we call a two-dimensional shape. It has length and it has width, but it hasn't come off the page. It's just flat. I've just drawn it. That third dimension is the piece that I was just showing you today, the part that allows something to rest in my hand. And that dimension is called height. So you guys are all three-dimensional people because you have a width, how much your space your body takes up. You have um, a length. If we talk about your the space you take up in a different direction, and then you have height, right? How far off the ground do you come? So we are all three-dimensional people, and for the most part today, I want you to go looking for three-dimensional objects. So on Seesaw, you're gonna see this choice board, and there's three different activities, one in green, one in teal, and one in yellow, and I'm gonna go through them each with you. The first one is a scavenger hunt. And when you are on um, CSAR, when you open it as to a, a Google slide, if you just click right on this document, it's gonna pull up um, a PDF that you can print if you want to have a printable version of this. If not, grab a piece of paper. You don't even have to write these down. But notice, go outside and be sort of thinking about where do I see these shapes? If you wanna write them down, 
absolutely, that's great. And certainly if you see things, um, like I said down here, if you see things that aren't listed, use the back of the paper, um, because this is certainly, these are some examples of objects you might find that have this, um, that are these three-dimensional shapes, but they're certainly not all of them. Um, and if you want to use the blank version, that's great too. That way you could record your own discoveries. You're not kind of like locked in to making sure that you see, you know, this type of tree or a traffic cone or something like that. You could just record um, whatever it is you see. So feel free to use either recording sheet or um, absolutely make your own if that doesn't suit you. Okay, so I'd like you to go outside. You can go around your neighborhood. If your parents will go with you, you could go inside your house. Certainly, you know, I was just sitting here having just some ice water in my drink. And I noticed that this is like a cylinder. So that's something too. You're probably already seeing these things in your house now that we're talking about it. The second activity um, is again, pulling out your chalk, but drawing some two dimensional shapes. And this activity gets more back towards like sorting um, and the way that we describe shapes. We call that word attributes. Say that, it's a fun one, attributes. Um, it's sort of like, how would I describe this to you? Well, I could tell you that it has four sides. Um, I could tell you that it is um, longer than it is wide. I could maybe tell you that it's green. Um, I could tell you that it's pretty narrow or something like that. So they're the words that we use to let someone know what we're talking about. Those are the attributes. Um, so as you draw, you could draw triangles and circles and, and squares and rectangles um, that are different sizes. Maybe draw the smallest one you can. You could draw them in different colors. You could draw them with a different number of sides, like I said, thickness or thinness, um, or give them a different pattern or different texture. Um, so I would challenge you to see how many different, perhaps like how many different triangles can you draw? How different can they look? Can they be really, really tall and skinny? Can they be super fat and wide? Um, so play around with that and then try to sort them. Like, oh, I see all these pink ones. Okay, now I could group them by just the shapes that have um, four sides to them, okay? And then if you wanna move your body, I was playing around doing this earlier, um, you could try to, if you draw it out kind of like a, a grid or like a shapes space like this, try hopping around and jumping only from purple shape to purple shape or only from circle to circle to circle. Or, you know, you can only jump on things that are both yellow and triangles or something like that. So you can play around, uh, but it might be a fun way to get some exercise in also. All right. And then the last activity we have today um, involves either two dimensional shapes. So, right. So I'm calling this two dimensional, even though really those rocks do have some thickness to them. So they really are three dimensional, but I'm calling it two dimensional because it's more flat to the ground um, versus three dimensional here, like bigger three dimensional would be to try to build something like a triangular prism or try to build a pyramid of some sort. Um, so you could use rocks, acorns, leaves, sticks, anything else you can find um, certainly in your yard or maybe that you have in your house to see what shapes you could make. Um, some ways that I think you could challenge yourself would be to say I'm going to make a square only using pine cones, just one material, or I'm going to make a um, circle only using acorns or only using white rocks. Um, so you could try it by just narrowing down the objects you allow yourself to use. You could also challenge yourself by saying, all right, how small of a square can I make without it touching? Because a square like without with leaving an opening in the middle, what could you do? Um, how big could you make one, right? Could you make a circle that is like covers your whole, I don't know, like driveway or that it, a rectangle as big as maybe a front step or something like that. Um, so you can certainly play around with this. Um, and then in sort of an ongoing challenge, it would be looping back to measuring. And for this, um, you could measure what we call the perimeter. The perimeter, if you watch me right now, I'll trace it here. Um, the perimeter is, it's gonna be too big. The perimeter is out the outside. Okay, so like measuring the outside of a shape. Um, that's the perimeter. It's sort of like imagine like walking around it, um, right? So sometimes we talk about like the perimeter of a building. If you walked around the outside of the building, that's the perimeter. You could try to measure that laying an object end to end. So you probably need at least two. You could use a pencil, a marker, a stick and see, okay, if I remember I touch one here and I come right to the other end, 
and then I move the other one down. Um, that's what we call a standard unit. You're using the same thing the whole way around. What is the outside measurement of some of these shapes that you make? You could keep track of it, could write it down, um, and then certainly share it with me, share it with your teacher. All right. Well, mathematicians, that is what I'd like you guys to get up to today. So it's three different choices. You can do one of them, you can do two of them, you could please do all three of them, I'd be delighted. Um, but have fun, um, do what you can, and certainly be in touch if you have any questions. All right. All right, guys, I will see you soon. Have fun.